It's Phil here for Digital DJ Tips at NAM 2016. Look at the mismatch between Mark in his jumpsuit, the Ghostbuster and the exec, but hey, we're, <laughs> we're just music lovers, aren't we? And Mark's got something really cool to show us, which is the new Nexus gear here on the Pioneer stand. So, uh, you know, we're all aware of Nexus. It's been a standard for a long time, but that's the point. It's been quite a long time. Yes. And they're updated to Nexus 2. Absolutely. Talk us through, Mark. All right, we've come a long way. So the Nexus 2 is a CDJ 2000 and a DJM kit. So let's start over here in the top left corner of the CDJ. Um, you'll notice now, instead of three hot cues, we have four buttons, and we have actually two banks of four. So you have a total now of eight hot cues. They are actually color coordinated with the color bank set within uh, your record box hot cues. Uh, moving on to actually the way we record the hot cues is now different as well. Uh, instead of entering record mode, recording a hot cue, and then exiting record mode to trigger the hot cue, you now just, let's put a little blank one here. You now just tap it to record it, and then re-tap it to launch it. So uh, moving on down here, we have our forward and reverse switch, but we also added a slip reverse, which is a momentary switch, which is only active as long as you hold it. So what that does is it puts you in a momentary reverse and activates slip mode. So it'll, you'll have a reverse sounding effect while the track continues to play underneath. And when you uh, let go of that switch, it will jump back to its original spot as if you had never touched a switch in the first place. Um, we, we brought back the four beat loop which is a one-touch four-beat loop, and if you uh, hold it down, it's an eight-beat loop, and then every time you touch the button after that, it cuts that loop in half, which gives you a nice little stutter effect. Um, the screen, we went from a six-inch screen to a seven-inch screen, and it's also now a touch screen. So we replaced the ribbon, and now you can needle drop or needle search just by touching your waveform as long as you're in pause mode. Another cool thing about that, while the track is playing, let's say you're here at your in the beginning of your breakdown, and you're curious, how, much, how long do I have until my breakdown is over? You can kind of just touch it while the track continues to play underneath, and you get that little green line, and now you have a countdown until where that green line is. So now you'll see you have eight bars until that breakdown is over. And you can kind of do that with any, any place in the track. You find your spot, and it will count down the number of bars till that track. Um, one of the really cool features that everyone is going to love, I just hit that my little shortcut button, which is kind of the, the super button of this player. The shortcut button, it brings you to this screen. You can search with a full QWERTY touchscreen keyboard. That is a huge feature. Uh, you can also now, as you can see, toggle between blue and RGB waveforms. You can also change your quantize setting. Previously, it was uh, always at one beat. You can now go from one beat to a half beat, quarter beat, or one eighth beat. Uh, you can auto. You can set your hot cues to auto load. You can leave them off, or you can actually just go with your record box settings. Our phase meter is now interchangeable. This is our new phase meter with the lines there, which makes it a little bit more easier to uh, to line your tracks up as opposed to our old phase meter, which is the four blocks. But you could just tap it to change back and forth between the two. We also have a beat jump button, which will allow you to jump forward or backward one beat. Quick touch loop mode. You could just toggle between your loop size right here. One of the really cool features that we added is a track filter. Now the track filter allows you really to dig deep if you're playing like a long set and you really want to search through your tracks and get really specific. So there's two different versions of this window. Um, so right here you can say, all right, I want to I want to search all tracks between plus and minus six, per, let's go 5% of 128 beats per minute in the key of C or a related key and anything rated three stars. And let's say we want the colors to be pink green and purple. Now, when I hit this button, I don't have any tracks that meet that criteria, but right now if I were to tap that button, all the tracks that met those criteria would pop up. So we hold it down to go back to edit, and now you can even dig further by going into my tag, and now the my tag feature, uh, th these would all be uh, would be controlled through record box. So you would go through and tag all your tracks accordingly. So you can say components. Um, Anything that's synth, 
and dark or situation. Um, I'm playing an after hours set, so let's just after hours tracks. And then we have an untitled column here, which is customizable. So you can say, you can change anything. You can uh, you can set your criteria to to anything that you want. So you want to do, uh, you know, pool party tracks or uh, you know anything like that. Uh, so back to the situation, you can build up after hours. You can do like warm up, um, you know, late night, anything you want to do. And you can also do genre. Uh, we don't really have anything here, but these are all set within uh, within your tag it, within Record Box. And then a quick one touch reset clears out all that search criteria so you can restart your search over again. So that's really, really cool. It enables you to dig really deep um, as opposed to just sc kind of scrolling a wheel. Um, the main feature that we can't show you is the sound quality. The sound quality of these is the highest sound quality we've ever put out. It outputs a full uh, 9624. The mixer takes in 9624 and puts out 9624. So there's, uh, there's very li little loss sound quality. Um, jumping onto the mixer, first thing you're going to notice here, top left hand corner, we'll, we'll kind of make our way down and then back to the right. Two sound cards, each with its own MIDI switch. Enables you to either have two DJs play at the same time or enables you to switch off between two DJs playing back to back. Um, moving on down here, you'll now notice we have a parameter knob on our sound color effects. What this enables you to do is tweak the different parameters. So like in a filter, it changes your resonance. Um, we, we also brought back a sweep, which changed your band pass on the parameter. The noise is now slightly quieter, but we added the uh, volume knob in the parameter. Uh, moving on down here, in the headphone section, you'll notice we have two headphone outputs. One is your traditional quarter inch jack, and then we had a, a, an eighth inch jack for all those DJs who happened to lose their adapter on the plane. And that's, that's quite a lot of DJs. That's quite a lot of DJs. Um, also, it's good for uh, two DJs playing at the same time. In instead of, you know, wearing somebody else's sweaty headphones, you can uh, you can have your own and, uh, and plug them in separately. Next thing you'll notice here is these, these beat effect lights. Now, what this, what this indicates is which channel your beat effects are actually assigned to. It was kind of hard to tell before, but, you know, seeing, seeing the, the little... Uh, the little writing on the mixer in a dark nightclub. So now this is a bright blue display. Uh, cool thing you could do uh, is add effects to multiple channels by, let's say we're gonna assign these two channels to crossfader A, and now we'll assign effects to crossfader A so I can affect both channels at the same time. Um, one really cool feature, and it's actually a very subtle feature, but it's one of my favorites, is a new channel fader curves. So this middle one here is a very it's very good for the long mixing. And now the reason we incorporated that is because a lot of DJs who like to use rotary mixers love that really long mix where you can get very precise with the movement of your uh, with the movement of your channel fader. So what this kind of replicates is uh, that really long mix of uh, of, of uh, rotary type mixers. Moving on to the beat effect section, this is really cool. Uh, we added a ping pong delay. We added, uh, we brought back pitch, which was on a couple of the older mixers. And we added a vinyl break effect. And we added something called the helix effect, which is really cool, which is kind of like a, it's like a loop grabber sampler. And then you can actually uh, grab a loop uh, from any channel you want, and then assign that loop to be played back on a different channel, which you can then affect with your sound color effects. And then by changing the timing of that effect, it will change the, the pitch of the sample. So it's actually it's, it's actually a really cool effect. Um, James Zabila is amazing at demonstrating it. If you haven't seen the product launch video, I definitely recommend you check that out. I would do um, I wouldn't do it justice if I tried to imitate it. <laughs> so I won't even attempt. Um, another really cool thing is the effect frequency selector. So now you can choose which frequencies you want to apply the beat effects to. So uh, as we said, we have a ping pong delay. Now a ping pong delay wouldn't really sound good if it had the lows, if you were um, ping ponging your bass. So you could just deselect your lows. Another cool thing you can do is on a vinyl break, deselect your low, give me like a two bar, a two, uh, sorry, a two beat break, and then you can actually just do like a cool break effect. Three. 
but you can hear the beat playing in the background. So your bass line is still going. So that's a really, it's a really cool way to, uh, to really manipulate your effects. Uh, another thing we did here, we doubled the size of the X pad, making it much easier to jump back and forth uh, between between your timing. So if you want to do like a roll, you can one beat, four beats, eighth beat. It's very easy to jump back and forth. And now you'll see that little ribbon in the middle. This helps you change uh, different parameters of the effect. So this beat here, or um, this button here, will change your beat timing. And then this slider here will change your modulation on your effect. Um, another thing we did, which is huge, we separated completely the send and return. So in, on previous mixers, you can either use a send and return or you can use your beat effects. You can never use two at the same time. Now what we can do is we completely broke that out. So your, your, your send and return is now up here and there's two types of return. You can either return as auxiliary, which would actually return to a completely separate channel, or you can insert, which is the old type. And another thing, we, so we have the quarter inch center return jacks on the back, and the industry first that we uh, incorporated is a digital center return via USB-A port. Now what that enables you to do is send out to an iOS device, here we have an iPad hooked up, and we're running our RMX 1000 app. Now what this enables you to do is uh, it acts basically as, a, as, a, as a, an RMX 1000 hardware piece. So you can use this as if you actually had an RMX 1000. Um, so you turn it on, sign it to channel three. So that's, a, that's an industry first. Now this doesn't only work with our RMX app. You can use anything like uh, any type of, um, uh, of, of app that supports uh, sound through the lightning port. So any type of different, um, uh, like any type of, of, of pad effect, a guitar pedal effect, anything like that, you can, uh, you can incorporate that into your set now with our digital send and return. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, as you can see, we incorporated a lot of new bells and whistles but again most importantly I can't stress enough it's is the sound quality of both of the units um, we really stressed um, getting rid of that harsh digital mixer sound that that we're kind of known for it's still a digital mixer but the sound is much warmer much cleaner and it's just a much better all-around sound quality that we're extremely proud of so it always was a flag flagship mixer it always was a flagship uh, media player but there's a a, a lot of incremental changes Absolutely. which all together add up to, to kind of the next few years for Pioneer all there uh, especially the digital out I think something really new um, yes. alongside the other stuff which is kind of developing on what was already there correct uh, awesome well thank you very much Mark it's been a pleasure talking Thanks. through the new stuff when's it available when can DJs get their hands on it it'll be available at the end of February perfect thanks a lot have a thank good show you.